Okay, so in poster design, we now have all of our elements in one place, right? So let's look at them pretty simply. We have a background. We have a border. That border has an edge between it and the background. You're all required to have a, a background and a border, right? So the border being white and the background being the same white doesn't really make it a poster, right? That just makes it a free floating image. But even if it's just a pure white border, which it usually is, and then an off white background, that makes a big difference. That controls the eye differently and it sets up the next element differently. So the next element is your spot illustration, right? And where you place it and what its edges look like matter. Also, you can see a lot of these, the spot illustration it might play with transparency a little bit, right? Where one element is overlapping another element, things like that. So even just in placing one element on top of another, there's a lot of questions and design uh, options you have that you can play with. And we'll see different that it's handled differently in different solutions here. And then the third element for your poster that's required is your type, you know? And of course, the type, I can make a duplicate of it. You can play with its placement. This looks more like an elementary school poster or something. You can split it up. Because it's rasterized, you can do this. And often, I mean, one of the reasons I like digital the most is because I don't always know what's best until I see it, until I can play with it. So you get a lot of chances at layout, right? You get to try a lot of different things. I'm pretty sure I don't want that. But what about another layout solution? I'm going to make duplicates of my elements here just so I can play around with them. What if I wanted to curve the type? Now that the type's all finished and it's rasterized, I can just transform it like anything else. And I can warp it. I can warp it with a straight bottom or not, you know. And I can play with different different uses. Different sizes. Black type is the core, but then I can always like fill it all in with just one tone if I wanted to. And then turn off and on those effects. So lots of options, but this is kind of what I liked. Feels kind of the edgiest, but it's not finished yet. Like I didn't like the, the solid red. I wanted to, to tone it down a little bit so that the red of the blood stands out more. And I wanted to have some of the texture of that letterpress. So one thing I did was I took this yellow fill color and I changed it to dissolve mode instead of normal mode. So normal mode, when you take the opacity down, it just lets whatever is behind it come through. When you do dissolve mode, it will keep everything as a 100% pixel, but it will start opening up those pixels, little spaces, little granular spaces. And it prints better than it looks on screen, right? But there's individual little holes punched in it kind of dissolving through. And the more I take the opacity down, the more those come through. So I'm gonna get kind of the, the ochre tone I want. I don't want it to look orange. I want it to look kind of folksy. So maybe about there. And then I'm gonna add that, that gradient, that purple gradient 
that is on soft light. And that kind of highlights the sharp edges of my offset. I think my drop shadow is very effective here to help separate the type. So yeah, we're going to get to play with all of that. So um, what are some other, these are the basic things, right? I'm going to play with coloring the type. But the other thing we could play with is, is the edge. So this is a clean edge. And I created that clean edge by actually making it myself, right, with just the rectangular marquee tool. But what if I wanted a sloppy edge? So we see mostly clean edges here, like that's a clean edge border. I can do a clean bordered edge. And I would do that by putting a stroke around the border I chose, right? Just like that. And I can choose any color. But I can give it a bordered edge. And honestly, that doesn't look that bad. And I might steal the color from somewhere. Like maybe from there, or maybe here. Kind of that rusty color. Remember, if it's open in Photoshop, you can steal the color. Yeah, I like that. So that's one option. What if I want a sloppier edge? Let's find an example. So this is what's called a full bleed edge, that poster, which means it's printed like this, but then it's just cut right to the edge. I don't want you to do that because you can't print digitally without some sort of border. We don't want our printers to print all the way to the edge of the paper because then ink spills into the printer. But we can always cut it out after. But for now, I want you to, to do it. So this is an example of an internal edge. So that's kind of interesting. Here we have the double outlined edge, which is common for comic books. Here we have a soft edge and then a hard edge. I thought we had at least one that was sloppy. See, this is a really faint edge, but it's clean. So what would a sloppy edge look like? This is kind of sloppy. So there's a few ways. I'm going to go back to here, and I'm going to make a new border. So I duplicate it, right? And the easiest way to make a sloppy edge is to just blur it. Take your hard edge border, if it's white, if it's black, whatever. Blur it quite a bit, and then duplicate that so it's nice and opaque. So I copied it a bunch of times, and now I'm going to merge all those copies together with Command-E. And I still have the stroke turned on, but you see how that stroke is getting kind of blurred out across all those layers. This should sharpen it again. Okay, and then I'm just going to fill that all with white. So a color overlay. I want you to have a white border, but you get to play with your edge. So <laughs> it's a little complicated to explain why it didn't work but I know why it didn't work. And that's because I had a stroke as an effect on all those layers, and that stroke was always sharp. So even though I blurred it, the stroke would be sharp at the edge of the blur. So now I'm gonna do the same thing, <laughs> and I'm just gonna blur it without the stroke. And that's a sloppy edge. All right. And then of course you can get a lot sloppier, 
should you want. I kind of like that, so I'll make a duplicate. And I'm just going to kind of roughly cut kind of a hand-done edge. So instead of using a marquee tool or guides or something really perfectly even to make my border, I can hand draw it or I can scan in a handmade piece of paper and then use its edges. Lots of methods. I can steal it from an image online, you know, of a sloppy border I like, maybe from a, an old analog photograph. Then I can say in a new layer, select inverse and then edit fill with white. And so this is a hard edge sloppy border. But then if I want to give it some variation, I can soften it. So I'll duplicate that and I'll gouge and blur it. And then into the Gaussian blur, I'm going to go in and some of these areas that I think are too bumpy, I'm going to cut out not cut out, but select, and then fill with something that's not blurred. So there's that variation as well. If you want to look like an old, you know, Western wanted poster or something, those would always have sloppy borders. And you can use an eraser. And you can set the eraser at different hardnesses, different opacities. Not an eraser, I'm sorry, a paintbrush. Just paint with white. And just playing with the different hardnesses, kind of biting into it. You can use textured brushes. At different opacities. I mean, you can really customize this edge. Be a pretty interesting, you know, sloppy border. And we'll learn with assignment 10 how to modify your brush to get it to do all kinds of things. Okay. So that's an option. And then I can give that sloppy border an internal, right? So that starts to look like an old photograph or something. All kinds of options. But what do I like? I think I like the hard edged, straightforward white. But maybe, just maybe, I will use a little bit of that soft edge and just fade that in. So this is called vignetting. When you treat the edge differently than you treat the rest of the image. So that soft white glow, that's vignetting. And I, um, whether you make it lighter or whether you make it darker, it's vignetting. So what I'm gonna do is make a duplicate of this the base layer and then i'm going to use the burn tool to show you another type of vignetting which is to darken it i'm going to darken the midtones zero percent hardness really big brush exposure up close to 30 but never beyond 30. and this is something right out of the the photography dark room and i'm going to burn the edges Remember, it's on a duplicate. So again, it's ways you can build variation into your background. Not just as a straight gradation, but as a vignette. Especially if you have something centrally composed that helps focus your attention. You can see the vignetting here. I don't see it in too many of the others. You can see. 